As Halcinda enters a new age, we look back upon what led us to this point, and where we may go from here. We begin by looking at the ruling tree of Halcinda, to see what has formed the Empire today, and where the cracks begin to show. For as a Grand Council has been called and a new heir has been named, somehow the Queen has healed, and her once underage heir is now ready to inherit an inheritance that has been stolen from him. And to understand what this could mean for the realm, we go back to look at Malaris's father. Rhaegar I, the Golden. The founder of the dynasty, Rhaegar was the last surviving member of a bastard line of Valyria. When those around him expected him to die, he instead found himself on the back of a mighty dragon. And he and his newly named Majesty would form a bond which would conquer the world. Aback his dragon, he burned Lord Sintara and claimed the Isle of Illyria. But that wasn't enough for him, for his legacy. Great men cannot be held back. Before his 20th birthday, he had already unleashed Dragonfire on Tolos and Mantaris, conquering some other kingdom where he could grow. From him, a golden empire formed. Wealth, prosperity, and a vast expanding population greeted the empire, and it was from him that they took their first steps into Valyria, as the first colonies began. His conquering and questing continued as he secured kingdoms for his sons, and an empire for himself. Marine fell to Dragonfire, Yunkai and Astapor fell soon after, and soon the old king placed a conqueror's crown upon his head, as the people witnessed a man go from a small island to an empire with wealth paramount. Much like the Targaryens in that fact. But while the Targaryens had fallen and Westeros was in a disaster and chaos, Rhaegar secured his titles. Through him, Illyria would be eternal. Aemond I, the Dragon. From the memory of his birth, Aemond was trained to rule, and ruling is what he seemed suited for, doing it all his life with an air of arrogance for he grew inside the shadow of his father, a shadow that no man could ever match. He could never be as good as his father, and that angered the prince. The prince let none question his ability to follow his father's legacy, or his own ability. On Dragonback, he burned Marine until they submitted to his power, and took their pyramids as his throne, ruling there until it was time for him to be named emperor. Already, stress had begun to take him, and by the time his father died, he was already 33, but looked at least 50. He would rule for only six years. In that time, he showcased power and authority in an attempt to secure the succession of his line, keep his blood on the throne, and prevent war. Yet his stress grew, and stress became sickness, and soon gout took him, growing worse and worse. By the age of 37, he could no longer fly on Dragonback. Two years later, at the age of 39, he passed away. Many consider his legacy to be that of fire and flames. Others saw him as a warrior and builder. Many, though, simply wonder, what if? Jaehaerys I, the Mad King. Thrust into war against his uncles, Jaehaerys was not expected to rule for long. He was dull of mind, as was his beloved life Dana. Yet somehow the two dragon riders carved for themselves an astonishing legacy. Together they defeated greater forces, and greater dragons. As Majesty perished, slain by Malaris on the back of Meraxes, the mightiest dragon still to live, so fell the chance of any true opposition to his power. He continued forth with his armies, fighting himself, leading battles upon the back of his dragon, and with Ithilix, Astapor and Marine soon fell, and the Empire of North Valyria was solidified under the rule of a new emperor, crowned upon his grandfather's throne. For 24 years, Jaehaerys ruled on the Golden Throne at the head of Majesty's Keep. It was a rulership of many troubles and problems, but many greats which could not be denied. 
More than any other king, Jaehaerys expanded the treasury and began mass colonisation of Illyria, a path which would push the empire onwards towards unprecedented power. More wars of conquest came, building more wealth and more coin. Somehow, the king who had never been expected to sit upon his own throne, the dull and slow Jaehaerys, ruled for the second longest in Illyrian history. In his final years, lunacy did to overtake him, and for many, it clouded his legacy. Many may have called him Jaehaerys the Silver, if he had not gone quite so mad. He believed in strange figures which followed behind him. He would often talk to himself, or would often appear afraid of shadows and figures. Some say he thought himself as delicate as glass. As time continued on, he slowly disappeared into his shell, stress and sickness and his adult mind worsening. And soon, he would fall to sleep and would never awaken. Aemond II, the, the Tyrant Upon his ascension, and with a clear path of unimpeded power before him, Aemon II's only thought was to secure his line, earn his heir, and, in his own words, cleanse the blood of Cinder. Jaehaerys' marriage to Bahra had produced two sons of darkened and tanned skin and black hair. Aemon II, already anxious and worried of questions of Illyrian purity, mostly spurned by his own brown hair and green eyes, made it his first move to disinherit his brothers. Then, to secure his line, he was soon wet to pure blood, and had his own child, Valar, and lucky for him, one of beautiful white hair and purple eyes. His rule, however, was marred by war. Originally mere weak slave raids, but soon a war against two fronts of the same family line. Prince Beleren of Yunkai and his mother, Meleris, used whatever coin and allies they had and began to rise, as soon they held enough strength and power to contest against Aemon and his wife, both of them on dragonback, ready for war. Yet neither side would slow down, they had massive armies of their own, and it seemed Aemon's tyrannical rule did nothing for him. His harsh taxations to rebuild the colonies came back to bite him, as Astapor chose to rise and so did Geese. Only marines stood loyal, and with their mighty dragons, it was still not enough. Despite holding superior numbers over the armies of Regal of Yunkai, he took to sieging the city, for he knew that if he could take Yunkai before Illyria was sieged, he could control the war and separate their armies. Aback the mighty Volgais, Aemon rose into the sky, only for the mighty Volon to siege upon them, and in an instant, cutting into Volgaif's wing, ripping it, tearing it, and pulling it from the body. The dragon could not fly, and as Aemon II fell to the ground, only those who knew him best could wonder if he had any regrets. The La the First, the Uncrowned. A baby when he ascended, born amidst a war that had been fought on his behalf. There was never a chance for a crown to be placed upon Valar's head. When his father died, Valar was nowhere near Illyria, as the city was not safe. Instead, he was being kept in safety, and in secret, in Mantaris. He was only a year old, not even a regent could rule in his stead. Instead, it was clear that the war was lost from the moment his father had passed. Fighting continued for a time, but once Melia Marsh had fallen to Beleriand and Illyria was on the verge of collapse, it was clear no army could combat a fully grown Ifelix on the battlefield. And so, the stepmother of the young Valar, serving as his regent, sued for peace. And while the boy would keep a pittance, a title of North Illyria, and keep his family blade of majesty, everything else was lost. His wealth, his father's dynasty, usurped by the so-called Merry Queen. Now the ruler of the Kingdom of North Valyria, few could deny the boy's ambition to restore his family name and honour. He, the descendant of the Firstborns, has been usurped from his throne while barely able to talk. Now with the largest army of the Empire's Kingdom standing alongside him, the fault must be said, surely he cannot rest easily. Malaris I, the Merry Queen. Third-born daughter of the founder, and one of the few children remaining of his first generation, Malaris was named for her mother, 
Maleris of Magia, a mighty dragon rider who became a favourite of Rhaegar. Maleris was betrothed to her brother, Jaehaerys of Astapor, known as Jaehaerys the White. It was his claim to Illyria that set the Empire alight in civil warfare, and he who was slain in battle by Jaehaerys the Mad. Her second husband, Regal of Yunkai, was her nephew through Aemon's the Dragon, and was a devoted and charismatic man. Together they had two sons, Jaehaerys of Yunkai, who had sadly passed not too long ago, and Balerion, the King of Atlantis. In 92 AC, she pushed forth her claim for the title of House Cinder, and her husband stood beside her. He rose with the armies of Yunkai, and she with the armies of Bravosi Swords, aback the mighty dragon Ifelix to claim her father's throne, a kingdom her brother husband was denied. She won her title, yet the war took her second love, as Regal of Yunkai perished on Dragonback, losing in a duel to Aemon II's wife, Visenya. We now stand in an unknown era, for the queen is old, sick, and tired, yet her heir continues to grow more and more. If she continues to live, he will be a man ready to inherit, yet she had passed his crown on to another, Bathan, a man of his own interests, siding, of course, against her in war, yet now to inherit her title, to end her line? Surely she could not allow it. Surely Beleren could not allow it. Surely Valar could not allow it. Many began to grow worried that a second war could begin, a war once more over inheritance. Yet, there was also a thought among the many that, well, they had not yet realised it, there was still a chance the Queen could live, and if she could live long enough, there's a chance that she could keep the peace. And if she could do that, then just maybe her line could continue. As the dragons once more ride, peace for once seems an option. Hello guys and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, a game of thrones where we are playing as Empress Maleris the Merry of North Valyria where we stand in a interesting situation of course at the end of last episode we call the Great Council because we are 50 we are approaching a tough age and our grandson the Lord of Yunkai is still young and he is quick but not incredible and so with worries about succession, it seemed the only way forward was to name an heir. And the heir they chose was Bathan of Marine. Was it the right call? That is a question all of its own, especially as we are, of course, sick with cancer, which is what led to much of this. Not much to be said in terms of changes other than the expenses we have spent trying to expand in this region. Uh, bidding war won by Lord Corono, uh, or sorry, of House Aralean, which is just an absolute sick picture there. It's more of a law one, but um, he's been a merchant in my court for some time. Uh, so it makes sense that he is the one to win this. And to put up a bit of our own money into it, we are you know, our debt is starting to mount a little bit. We have slaves we can sell, however. And maybe we may spend a bit of this episode looking to continue some of the slave raids. Uh, why, is it, why is this not considered a coastal target is what I'm not understanding. Would this be a coastal target? No. I don't really get that. Do I? Oh, I only have owner. So I guess if you have, you have to be a, a republic to do that then, because the republic has a slave trader trait. Anyway, let's start off. Yes, this is a 
marriage I thought would be a smart one. Lairon is technically the heir of my heir, so marrying her to Helena of Yunkai seems to me a wise idea. We need to keep the houses united if we want Cinder to do well. Especially considering how strong some of our vassals are becoming. Uh, our son has 20,000 to his name. Yunkai only has 10. Marine has 13. Gis has 23k, so currently the strongest vassal. And then Astapor has 8k. People tried to kill my son, Beleron. Uh, and that block. Turn off auto stop plots, so I'm not stopping every single plot, but hopefully I can find out who's trying to kill my son and stop that. Because I would very much like for my son to not be killed. He has won his war and revoked some land. Let's take a look at this at a moment. Um, he still does not have an heir, so the heir would actually, for him, would also be Valerian. Let's scare us, Denny and Fable, and drag a glass of wildfire in hopes of turning herself into a dragon. She's adamant that the wildfire now coursing through her veins has given her power like none before her. Yeah, she's a lunatic. Married to the Prince of Dragonstone. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Prince Vagan of Dragonstone? He's not in Dragonstone. And is instead here. This is where the Targaryens now reside. Excommunicated as well. Is that Dark Sister? That's Blackfire. Oh my goodness. Grandson not hatching his egg. That is indeed a bad omen. Especially after the Great Council was called. Oh, Regal could be, has got diligent, quick, uh, attractive and diligent. Not bad at all. I do wonder if maybe next lifetime we will be able to expand into this region. It's going to take a few, it, like even once we get this, we're then going to have to spend ages before we can even get onto the Isles because we're going to need proper ships even consider getting that done. But once we can get on this island, we can very closely get our way to Valyria. And honestly, if we get Valyria, we are in a very good spot. Is there not a kingdom here? There is a kingdom of Long Summer. Maybe an act of laws. Empowering my cancel. I literally... Did everything I could to get rid of the council. Why are you re-empowering them? As long as you stay king. If you give your council full power back. I might scream at you. Don't be, don't be that stupid. If he fully empowers the council. I will go over and fix it. <laughs> he should not be doing that. I don't know why the AI is so determined to empower the council. I mean I know he's probably doing it. Because he has upset vassals. But you have a... a you do have a dragon, right? Yeah, you have um, Aaron. Aaron of Illyria. That is a pretty beastly dragon as well. Oh, I didn't need to sell for 40 gold. Damn it. Whoops. That was a total mistake. The stepstones are still mostly independent. But to be fair, when the Iron Throne looks like this, that's probably why. The only region which is really unified in a normal way is Bravos, Pentos, Mir, and North Valyria. I guess Carp a little bit too, but I think Yeti fell apart, right? Yep. You can legalize your bastard. I'll allow it. 60% chance of charitable, 40% of lustful. Or chased. Chased is worse, in all honesty. I gain charity. Okay, that's fine then. 
He's at war again? Can you not go a day without war? It's a slave raid on lease. He should win this at least though, right? Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Well, it is a problem that they're sieging down his capital and he's not really doing anything about it. That's a more of a problem of its own right. Kinsman and my courtier. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I'm sure. Didn't even realize they were betrayed. If I don't realize they're betrayed, I guess I just go along with it. Because why not? Hmm. Now you can stay in Volantis. I'm not going to steal you from my son. Lots of kill plots. Lots of kill plots. Let's stop these. We can construct a flagship. 150 gold to build a flagship. That sounds like a good idea. I mean, when we are an island, we need a proper navy. And it makes sense, you know, we're, we're trying to solidify our power. We've lost Mantaris and Tolos, which used to be a seat of our power. So we need to make that power back in other ways. And then we're going to spend some money back over here in Melior March. The problem I can see... It's blowing into my, my mouse there to try and <laughs> make it so it scrolls properly, because it is not scrolling properly. The, the problem I can see with losing these is just how powerful he is. He's too powerful, and it worries me. I have an extra dement size slot, but I don't really have anywhere I could use it. Hopefully when I get Valyria, obviously I'll be constantly using. I mean, I'd love to have every single bit of Valyria under me. But I don't know if that's going to happen. It's this guy with his Valyrian steel blade, Mad Flame, and his dragon, Sel Selhoron. Who is... Oh, Herax. It's interesting to look at... So from Valerian. We, the only living dragons is Maraxis, who had then had Quicksilver, who was ridden by uh, Bathan. Firecatcher, who was ridden by some random person a mile away. Valix, who's also ridden by someone completely random. Volon, who was ridden by my sister. And Princess Ray's Fafnar, as well as Sel Selharon and Carpaxes. And then obviously the other one to look at is the Ifelix family tree, which is the Illyrian family tree. So we have Majesty of Illyria, lived until the age of 60, was ridden by, uh, essentially I believe only ridden technically by, unless I'm forgetting someone, which I apologise, only ridden by Rhaegar and then by uh, Aerys the Unworthy, is uh, revealed to be legitimate son who died in war. In the uh, version of the Hands of the Dragons. Then uh, she had Faxalix, which uh, affectionate, lazy, ugly Faxalix, still alive, still written by Rhaegar of Astapor. Uh, had uh, Zekloss, who was ridden by Emperor Jahiris, a mighty Emperor Jahiris, of course, slayed by her own or by uh, their own. Our brother this is the Gloombringer. Very sad these two died. Not written, sorry, not written by Jaehaerys. Uh, Ifflix was written by Jaehaerys, but these two were ridden in the Dance of the Dragons against each other. And uh, Tikkun, the child, also passed away. So the, as did uh, Zuvdahar. Who was Zuvdahar written by? I believe was ridden by 
the, yeah, the, the former king of Yunkai in war. St uh, had the child of Galarix, which is written by Helena. Arryn, which of course is written by Valerian, as we've seen. We also had Fusterax, which is written by Valerian, my grandson. Ithilix has her own tree, with sadly only one. For Vizelrix, who died in battle in Fafnar of the Valerian family tree. There are two main trees of dragons. The Targaryen, Valyrian dragons, and the Illyrian dragons. I'm sure there's obviously wild dragon lines as well. Cannibal's line is probably out there somewhere. The peasants of the Port of Sires are spread far and apart. It wants a provisional men's messenger system for some prosperity. Uh, yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Good stables. We need patrol posts to upgrade those. That makes sense. Am I not able to upgrade this keep? Oh no, I am. I just literally... It's going to cost 300 gold to even get a smaller Lyrian keep. So this place is barely defended right now, so I'm going to save up to get this. Or I could even sell slaves to get it. Mm. That's not the wisest idea. I do need a core position at least. So we'll get one of those. If you give me 75, I'll it'll, it'll be yours. There. It's fine. Strange little man, but skilled. Bring him to my court. We get uh, treatment for my illness. Try something new, because I'm brave. So he's cured me at a very heavy cost, which could honestly kill me, because I think it's probably even worse. Severely injured. Those my health, my martial, my fertility, all of that. And I'm one-eyed. I mean, I already barely had any combat skills in the first place. And I'm going to have to spend some gold on the bloody port of size. Of course I am. Not even an advanced colony. We've been sitting on the port of size for so long. It just is not going. Oh. He passed away. He was murdered. By him. Can I not call him? To, I, I can imprison him, surely. For the murder of a horrid, horrid crime. I can sell him into slavery or I can enslave him. Yeah, I'm going to enslave him for his crime. An unbelievable crime. Slaying Baylor, the bastard, A&R. And now a new Lord of New Geese is formed. Lord Paramount Lenor of New Geese. Well, that was unexpected. Oh, somebody wants to buy him immediately. 225. Used to be a king. Or used to be a king killer. Ah, oh, and here we go. Master Jabero has informed me that the flagship of North Valyria is complete. The drama has over 700 oars, and a huge sail is blazoned with the arms of House Cinder. Many hundreds of people gather to watch be launched in the sea off Valyria, and all say it is one of the largest ships they have ever seen. Now that it has been blessed, you may select the name of your flagship. They can name it... You know, we're naming after Rhaegar. What a fantastic option. Absolutely. The founder of the house. We now have a massive flagship, the Emperor Rhaegar. Valix. Part of the... Or oh, another of the children of Quicksilver. Now ridden by Wallach the Wise over here for some reason. If you go a day without a peasant revolt, please. Oh my goodness. And he's still, he's, 
he's losing this war on beast, it seems like. Well, my son is an absolute moron. He keeps fighting wars he can't win. What a mess. What a mess. End that plot. Not having a plot to kill my son, please. Even if he is a moron. Did he, did he just say he's not going to stop the plot? I know he stopped the plot. Bloody flux has hit our cities. Oh dear. I've lost... The wound from your maiming is not thinking of no Ubering fuss. Oh dear. Well, I'm not severely wounded anymore, but I think this is worse. Yeah, this is worse. Ugh. Oh dear. Establish a household guard. Interesting. I like that idea as well. You know, I'm, I'm so old and weak. We've already got enough debts. I know I want to save up to eventually do something here, but I'm also just happy having a household guard to work with. Uh, 150 gold. It's a reasonable price, bro. Reasonable price. He's the Prince of the Thirteen. What a that more terrifying name for a... What the hell? He's going all over the place. <laughs> Quite incredible. There's no way that, he, that he's going to beat him in a battle. Surely, I mean, his dragon's still alive, right? Yeah, he gets instantly crushed by the dragon. Actually, the end of the Peasant Revolt. Or at least the near end of it. How's he struggling against Lee's, though? That's what I don't understand. See where this plague's going. Bloody flux. Again, it avoids Illyria because it is an island, which is great for us. We can just sort of shut down the port. We stay safe. We're going to keep saving it for the small Illyrian keep. I was inspected the damage of the highest of Illyria when the head of a Rhaenyra appeared outside the window, 50 meters above the ground. What should I do with this curious child? I bid her from the tower, which can get her either deceitful or craven. So curious has never killed anyone. 5% chance of mangled, wounded, brave, honest. I'm not going to let her climb towers. She's going to do it, but I'm not going to let her do it. Oh my goodness, how many factions? Lord Bathan for North Valyria. It is unbelievably weak for some reason. Increased counter power of North Valyria. I didn't even realize you still exist, buddy. I really do not care about your existence. People conspiring to kill me. Do I know who's trying to kill me? No, but we're still going to water stop bots. And we're going to hope that our spy master can do us some good service and keep us safe. Do I need to train any troops? I don't think so, right? No, we're, we're, we're fine on training troops. So instead we can set him to... Train my children. Uh... Let's get you on... Try to discover this plot. Oh my god, I forgot this was going to be expensive. Um... 
get a good education. He's already quick, so. I wish if he was that him being quick would mean his actually be slightly cheaper. Because in a way, surely he already knows much of what is going to be taught to him. Ah, his dragon is finally hatched. As Ant as Antress. And this is the child of another child of Felix. Wonderful. Yeah, Felix's first kid did not go well. Salchoris. What the hell is Salchoris? Oh, it's this guy's Dutch either, which is technically independent because he's at war. That won't last. Or at least you hope it would last. Helena and Le What is. Uh, oh my god, Lairon. I almost hope that you don't end up as he had. What is. What is this? What is this? He's 17, lad. My goodness. And his brother looks normal, right? Well, I don't know. He's not grown up yet, but... Prince Perez seeks to kill Vogos Hippatris. He's my rival. Uh, go ahead, my boy. Lots of people try to make schemes on, um, children. Not cool. How young actually is he? He's quite young, right? Yeah. My husband, Emperor Rhaegar, has overcome fatigue and troubled by a persistent cough. He's pneumonia. Oh, dear. Only 24. I have five, five gold for giving a good treatment for my husband, especially considering what happened to my last husband. I mean, I am married, essentially, the, I mean, the son of my former husband, through his first marriage. To her is the second. Man, I had such wonders about what could have happened with Jaehaerys II, you know? He really, he could have been a mighty king, but instead, we I'd argue we, we ended up with a surprisingly competent ruler uh, in um, Jaehaerys the, the Mad. For a madman, you know, with all of these horrid traits, under him, we actually saw some pretty stable leadership. And Aemon's Aemon the Tyrant. It almost feels unfair to call him the Tyrant. He had no chance to rule, no time to rule. Maybe he could have been a different man. He was cruel in the time he had, but it was a time of war. Things could have gone differently, you know. Things could have gone very differently. Instead, he's died, was slain by Malera Cinder, by our queen, in battle. The Chimera specific stat. Do I have that stat then? I have the sword, but I don't have that. So is that like just like a only for the rulers who actually had it? Like after death? Yes, so. This is a way of identifying that this was a person who wielded Kaimu. A new riot of a cellar horn. Where have they landed? Oh, that simply won't do. Should be able to just raise the local levies here. And then hopefully not have to command them myself. Get moving. Lower my tyranny a bit. Excellent news. Uh, 
I'm going in Hesh. Oh, the, yeah. What am I on about? I've lost the trait infection. Maybe my health might actually be manageable now. Some excellent news after a lot of bad news. And another victory for my son, but he needs to just take out this army of Lee's. They are, this Valance is being them is destroyed by this. Want to escape slavery, you're gonna end that plot. Why are you helping him? This is useful here. We have enough gold to get a never. Why never? I might just dumb and should have paid attention. That's not. I, I guess okay. It ne never. Requirements never. What a waste of money. All time, my grubber. We're going to have to pay off debts, probably when Malaris dies. That's usually when you have to pay off debts in this game, so. I've almost up to 100k now, in terms of troops. How's our new... That's doing... Uh, he's actually doing okay, all things considered. He's got Lopal Cave up to an advanced colony. Where's this guy got a fishing rod? People try to kill Beleran. Who? I guess technically who isn't, but also don't kill my son. Look at this. This is because he's trying to fight three wars at once. Or he, he tried to start a war that he shouldn't have. Oh yeah, I'll order him to stand down. Uh, Bran has a traitor. Have him arrested. It should end his war. Yeah, it ended his war. He's valuable. What artifacts does he have? What is this? A fiery blade of the Volarinius. What is the name of this flagship? <laughs> it is insane. Can I seize this? Oh, I can only take that. I would <laughs> take this off a bit. That would be a lovely ship to take. He's got a fire sword for some reason? This dude's crazy. I'm gonna execute him. Feed him to my dragon? Yes. I can release him so he can repay me later. <laughs> Go with my falconer. Go a bit of hunting. Why not? All of mine now. 55. Although I probably look and seem a lot older with, with all the conditions I had. It's probably bubbling around like Aerith, uh, like Eviserus. Now that is a name. It's for a queen. I'll ask politely. You are my son, after all. You finally won that war against Leeds. Wonderful. Great work. Don't go to war again. You barely have an army. The only person with an army now is basically geese, right? Yep, 26k. 13 years old as well. Might actually survive the whole way to adulthood. That alone is a rare thing in this game. Am I able to revoke his lands yet? Nope. What's to do with you? I could slave raid you? Let's slave raid you. Just because I could do with uh, more to sell later. I don't even need to get involved, I can just sit here because of the Civil War mechanics. I would have liked to fight it myself, but Civil War mechanics 
Again, I would love if there was a way to turn off that. Estin of Old Town. Sure, that's going to annoy. Where's he actually from? Why is he called of Old Town? Ooh, in the port of size, an amphitheater. Sure. Still only a colony, not even an advanced colony yet. Would you care to be a colony? I'd love if you'd be a colony. Don't have money. Worm River. Are they not vassals of Astapol? Why do they always raise independently of Astapol? I'd be earning so much more money if I still had Mantaris. I miss Mantaris. Mantaris. Get me some more taxes. And oversee the realm. Get more absolute realm authority. It's just more vessel levies, there's not much point in that. I think basically everything is exactly as I want it to be. The only thing I could maybe change is if I wanted to switch these around. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure somebody could tell me what the best min-max is for all of these. I mean, I didn't realize churches could even give me um, troops. It's 130 men. Why would I want 130 men? I finally do, do have an army. What a prize. I think I've given a very reasonable prize. It's cool court out of hiding. You actually going to war again? This can only end badly. The young talented artist from Illyria proposes to paint an iconic portrait of Emperor Rhaegar the Magnificent. Absolutely, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. I have 14k in but in Yunkai. And I'm getting stressed. But how do I I have more in Yunkai than I do in Marine? I was not expecting that. This just shows how big my armies can be if I'm able to raise them myself. That's why I would prefer not to have the Civil War mechanics. At least not all the time. Is he at peace with Estamont? Or is it just a guy who has an identical symbol to Estamont? Okay, not, uh, not Estamont. It would be funny if it actually was Estamont, I'm not gonna lie. Just randomly sailing or flying your dragon over to Estabod, burning it down and leaving. Oh, Estabod's green turtle. How could I forget? They're a war? Oh, it's a weird crab war. I really don't know if any of these kingdoms are actually still a part of the Iron Throne. Because the Iron Throne's always at war. Just constant war. So I have no idea if they're all independent vassals or not at this point. 
so I would be more reasonable man. His requester will have to do all this rival and that makes us slightly erratic. Sure. Ilya has died. The Paxis has driven into a rage. In the Dragon Pit. A son was born to Lord Larian of Marine and Lady Helena of Yunkai named Aaron. Regal. Damon, Balar, Lainor, Balar, Valerian, Nagor, Aemon, Jahir, is it? Aemon, Aemon. I mean, Bathan was a cool name. Oh, Alex. Alex. I mean, like Alex. Alex Cinder. Attractive. Let's get him on Thrift. Definitely gold. I didn't even realize I could get that much. Someone's gonna face a dragon eventually, I must always do. So the biggest threat is Valar because he hates me and he has a large army. And he's now 16, he's just turned 16. Janira has now rides Vedigan. But he's a real threat now. 20k troops. Maybe I could make him... Master of the Royal Elephant. Congratulations. Worthy title, I'm sure. He's not that great at anything. He's just an okay marshal. Still vastly outnumbered by free work. They still provide a notable portion of the province's labels. Ooh. Lairon is the one who has claimed Capaxes. Okay, yeah, maybe he's not a bad heir anymore, even if his hair is still stupid. <laughs> how how's these like sneak over here is how I wanna know. Like what's the in-game explanation for they oh they just stuck past all of your your men and suddenly arrived there. Don't worry about it. The Gascari Liberation. What a brave man. Let's get these troops up as well. You're going to take out these men and then come to meet them. I... I need extra ships. I kind of don't want to use my own men, which is why I'm using my vassal's troops for this. Because really I'm doing this for Giscard, not for myself. Get this ship in. Fine. Fleet. Send you on. Combine the fleet. Land. Yeah. Actually, no, I'll let your army stand down because I won't need it. And I don't want you to be too pissed at me. Bait sure sucks anyway. I knew that it was going to get sieged quick. Go to 15k. Malera's at Bathen. So the car. Chase after these guys. A ship back to uh no let's get you back to Valeria. Don't like that. What faction? You for North Valeria, buddy. I don't think that's gonna work. Right, we have less men, but we have it should be two dragons in this army. How nice of him. Okay, mate. We we there's a chance we might be able to fix our relations, even if my god it's like actually so far below minus hundred. It is like minus two hundred relation of me actually. Yeah, I don't think there's a chance we're gonna like each other.
Um, fine, I at least agree with that. That is a good point. Pay Valara a visit on the dragon back. On arrival, you land at the house of Tullus. Despite obvious meaning, Lord Paramount found out his you grudgingly, making it clear without saying that he had no intention of ceasing hostile scheming. You bastard. Um, I don't need to spend that gold on you. Need to stand down. Slinger levy. 540 archers. My goodness. That's pretty massive. I wasn't expecting slingers to be an option. Is that an option in all of these, or...? Oh, he's built his own flagship, has he? Yours is only regular, though, haha. <laughs> it's called resentment. He resents that my flagship's better than his. Let's build basic defenses in... the second keep of Melior March. She distinguished herself. I don't really have a need... She's not... Distinguish itself that much. Is he still at war? Is he at least winning? He is. He's called the Accursed, which honestly kind of makes sense as a name, all things considered, after how he's been ruling. <laughs> Lights going on in Oros. Pirate Lords of the Free Snakes. Not expecting that. I think that we shall call it here for this episode. An episode where I really thought Malaris would die from those early injuries, but she has recovered. Has she recovered fully? Of course not. But she's recovered enough, and we've earned ourselves a bit more gold that hopefully we might be able to pay off our debts. But more importantly, we, we sort of established our position far greater than one would expect. Building the Emperor Rhaegar, a flagship, a proper Drummond, showcasing our prestige and remembering our lost father, the man who formed this dynasty. With so much artifacts, it's pretty sick. And another Iphelix dragon egg that we're still gonna keep a hold of because I don't have anyone really to give it to. Our heir still remains as Bathan due to the decision of the Great Council, but surprisingly, our grandson is now of age. However, he does have his father's hair lip. One thing he got from his father, at least. That's undoubtable. And of course, his mother is a... a, a Lurina of Astapor, who is a bastard. And is now married to Rhaegar of Astapor. That's an interesting decision. But he is a legitimate uh, he is a legitimate son. But he's sick. If he dies, Regal is the one who will take his friend. Very interesting. There's a lot of messy things going on in on Illyria, and I think or in Valyria, and I think things could go, could go a lot worse before they get any better. The port of size I'm happy to use as a key point, so we need to get the port of size upgraded because this is going to be our key way into this region sort of our resupply point to these three so we're going to have to start investing quite heavily to make sure it passes and investing to pay off our debts but i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode i've certainly enjoyed it i had a wonderful holiday apologies for there not being a video when i was on holiday for those of you on the youtube channel this was obviously two weeks after, but for those of you on the Patreon, it was just last week, so my apologies. Thank you guys all so much for all the comments. The fact that we're still getting so many views on this series is amazing. Please keep it up. Keep watching these videos. Keep leaving me comments about where you think we should go next. Because there is a lot of paths we can take right now. As Malaris, and then as our heir, Bathan. Or perhaps Bathan may not remember uh, remain the heir. Maybe Valerian may heal from his cough and may push once more for his legacy who's to know
All I know is I think there's quite a few candidates for who shall rule Valyria next, and this great council, designed to answer the question once and for all, may have opened doors that we had not expected. But we'll find out about that in the next episode. Until then.